aerodynamics is the is the study of um, aerodynamic and ballistic forces on the golf ball. So we're talking about drag forces, lift forces, and the dimple patterns that we use to manipulate those forces appropriately by changing the pattern, the count, the layout, the size distribution, the shapes, the depths, all of those things and the combinations of them will impact the way that golf ball flies. And we're constantly trying to manipulate all those different areas to optimize aerodynamic performance. Dimples on a golf ball is, is going back to the days of <laughs> going back to the days of the gutta balls and the featheries, they started to figure out that as you made indentations in the ball or had some sort of perturbation on the surface, the ball actually flew better. And it's because dimples reduce the drag and they help with lift on the golf ball and essentially give you uh, an, an extreme amount of distance compared to a smooth golf ball. So it, I'm, the example we use is if you're a typical tour player, a dimple without balls, you'd be able to hit about 130 yards. And once you put dimples on, you can carry it 270, 280. So it's a significant increase. That's And that's why it's a, it's a keen area of focus. Okay, so dimples help the golf ball go farther. Yep. Um, why? Wouldn't it just be easier to put the same dimple pattern on, on every golf ball? Right. Dimple pattern design in itself is very difficult because we're trying to improve upon something that's already very good. And the only way that we can do that is through just intense research into the field. So we are constantly designing brand new dimple patterns. We build the tooling, we build the golf balls, and we test them. There's no real magic bullet to know what a dimple, whether a dimple pattern is going to be great or not once we design it. We've got to build the balls, we test them in the indoor test range, and we see what's best. So because of that, we're always doing different research and we have a lot of different dimple patterns that are good in other areas. So what that means is when we go into product development and we're looking at certain golf balls, we have, we have target golfers that we're trying to help make better, right? So for that target golfer, we are gonna dial in the construction to the best of our ability. But then at the end of the day, we're gonna put what we call the optimized dimple pattern on it. And what that means is <clears throat> for that golfer, there is an optimal flight that is gonna maximize distance for them. And one of the variables that we can control in dimple design is the depth of the dimples or the, what we call the edge angle of the dimples. So by changing that, you can manipulate the, tra the trajectory of the golf ball. So if you make the dimples really deep, the ball is gonna fly really low. And if you make the dimples really shallow, it's gonna fly really high. So you can imagine there's always a point where the dimples are too deep and you're too low, you're not getting enough distance. And there's a point when they're too high and you're not getting enough distance. The analogy we like to use is the garden hose. Everyone's been out in the yard with the garden hose and they point it and they're trying to get to that far flower bed to get water on it, but they're out of hose. So they start lifting up their arm and it gets, the water goes a little further, a little further, a little further, but then they get too high and it starts to come back. So they drop it back down. They've found that optimal trajectory for the water. We're doing the same thing with dimples. So by, uh, by changing the depths, we can very slowly dial in what the peak height of that golf ball is, what the trajectory is going to be, and we can maximize distance. So since we're looking at different constructions with different initial launch conditions, and we're looking at a, maybe a different subset of target golfers for different golf balls. The takeaway is that every single golf ball is going to be treated is going to be treated as a unique entity. So once we have the construction designed and we know what those launch conditions are going to be, we're going to test it with a bunch of different dimple patterns at a bunch of different depths, and we're going to find out the one pattern that best maximizes performance for that golf ball and optimizes the distance. So it doesn't mean that two things couldn't necessarily have the same dimple pattern, but they don't for us because we're always just, the, it's never, hey, can we just use this on these two? It's always, what is the best one? So we always just pick the best one. And because of that, every product that we have ends up having a dim different dimple pattern. So Pro V1 and Pro V1X having different dimple counts, different dimple designs are because if you didn't, 
they wouldn't go as far. Is that a fair way to say it? Right. So we're in with Pro V1 and Pro V1 X, it's a perfect example because we're trying to offer options to our golfers with those two golf balls. We're trying to give trajectory options. So Pro V1 X intentionally flies higher than Pro V1. That's by design. But because of that, we are better off finding a dimple pattern that's optimized at a higher trajectory for Pro V1X and finding a dimple pattern that's optimized at a lower trajectory for Pro V1. I could take the dimple pattern that's on Pro V1X, make the dimples deeper, and make it fly at the same trajectory peak height type window of Pro V1, but it wouldn't be as long because that's not where that pattern is optimized. It's optimized to fly higher. So that that uh, kind of unique property of dimple patterns is where they where they like where they essentially like to fly in the air allows us to optimize that trajectory and maximize distance for every product.